tonight. It's Pebble time. Websites get serious about porn. And happy 60th birthday, Steve Jobs. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 281 for Tuesday, February 24th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can grow and protect your wealth. Best of all, it's free. And for a limited time, Twit viewers could qualify for up to $10,000 on any new account. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech news. This morning on Tech News Today, we announced that the smartwatch maker Pebble today announced that their new color watch, Pebble Time, will be available in May. The company that started on Kickstarter returned to its roots by offering the watch for presale on Kickstarter. There were 10,000 watches at the lowest price of $159, which is about $200 less than the Apple Watch, in case anyone's keeping track. These disappeared pretty quickly, but as of this writing, there were still over 4,500 Pebble Time watches available at the price of $179. The regular price will be $199. Pebble Time will be compatible with Android and Apple devices. It has a built-in waterproof microphone. It has a screen made of Gorilla Glass and a battery that's supposed to last a week. Here to talk to us about this story and a few others is Rafe Needleman, Editorial Director at Yahoo Tech. Welcome, Rafe. Hey, it's good to see you. So the Pebble Watch, is it a threat to the Apple Watch? A threat? No, it's not a threat. Apple has, you know, resources of the entire, well, Apple, the largest company, big, most valuable company in the country. Um, They're rich. Yes, they can do what they want. They will be able to market the, uh, the Apple Watch up the wazoo. They will sell millions of them. The Pebble is a good thing for Apple because it shows the Apple shareholders that people are gonna take the new watch from Apple very seriously. Uh, Pebble's a drop in the bucket compared to what Apple can do, um, but the Pebble is, looks like a really good product, at least so far. And so does it, I mean, is it something that you would get? I already ordered one. I missed the, uh, the early order, uh, but I got my, my, um, my order in for the 179 one. So um, I'm, just, very, I'm, I'm excited about it, yeah. You ordered one? Because I, I read online yes. that there were lots of people who were ordering like 20 and, yeah, you could, I guess you could get two for a cheaper price. You just ordered yeah, one. I almost ordered two because they'll be get great gifts. Um, yeah, I ordered, but I don't. I don't know. Uh, and you know, that is real money. Um, <laughs> That's true. I have to then spend and then sit on it until you know somebody's birthday or Christmas rolls around. Uh, no, I'm excited about it. I'm actually more excited personally about this watch than I am about the Apple Watch because this one has an e-paper display which is always on, uh, and I like that. Uh, the Apple Watch looks gorgeous. It looks like jewelry, but you have to do the little thing with your wrist to get the watch to turn on. Um, and it'll probably work fine because it's Apple. Um, but personally, uh, I wouldn't go for an Apple Watch until version two, just because I know that the second version is going to be that much thinner and have better battery life. And I don't want to be wearing a $300 watch or more um, and then go, oh, I should have waited for the new one. Right. Because that's what's going to happen with the Apple Watch. Right. Yeah. I don't know who those people who are going to buy the, the first version of the $20,000 one or whatever it's rumored to oh, cost the gold. You'll, you'll know them because there will be millions of them. <laughs> right. I might work for one. Who knows? We'll yeah. see. Uh, so what does this tell us actually about the power of Kickstarter? I mean, they didn't need to uh, sell this on Kickstarter. They're, they're a company. They make profits. They, they have their own website. They have their own servers. So, so why did they bring it back to Kickstarter? What I have heard is that Kickstarter asks them to, and I think it's a win-win. First of all, all, Kickstarter makes you know a commission on the, the money raised. Uh, secondly, it's a really, actually I find it a rather touching way for Pebble to give back to their original fans through Kickstarter and say, hey, if you're interested in this watch, we'll give you a special deal on it uh, for being a, a fan on Kickstarter. When they open this thing up to a wider public audience, well, it is public. When they open it up to the wide audience and put it in stores like that, it'll go for a more expensive price. Uh, the Kickstarter version will come with an engraving on the back that says Kickstarter Edition. So it's just a nice way to give Pebble fans and nerds a chance to get in early. Um, but more importantly, it shows interest. It shows that people want the product. 
and it lets them gauge uh, how much they should be booking their or budgeting for production uh, in the year or so to come when the product is out there. Right. Well, it is. I've already heard a little bit of grumbling online from people who say like they shouldn't. You know, that's it's like the gentrification of Kickstarter. And um, <laughs> I mean, I actually made up that gentrification. That was my line. But I, there, I did hear people grumbling about it that this wasn't the place and that they need to. You know, they were sort of grumbling like the people you hear um, in San Francisco talking about gentrification. So I, I don't know. I mean, it, it seems like do you think people are going to start getting annoyed that companies are using Kickstarter just for the PR? Uh, you know, you build a, uh, a platform or a marketplace like Kickstarter and you have kind of limited control as to what it becomes over time. It's not the first time that Kickstarter has been used as a marketing or tool or something to gauge public interest by a company that really doesn't need to raise funds on Kickstarter. Many successful projects uh, raise part of their funds on Kickstarter part of their funds from other sources, part from venture, part from banks. It's not at all uncommon, um, even though it's not what necessarily Kickstarter intended. They thought that you know small companies would go onto Kickstarter and raise the money they needed to jumpstart their business from Kickstarter and then go forward from there. But Kickstarter is just, just one color of money, and you can have many to make a successful company. Right. I mean, even Pebble, I think they, they started out with some funding before they came up the first time to Kickstarter. And they may have, yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, Pebble was that gigantic success. You know, they raised $10 million uh, for their watch. It was the biggest um, success of Kickstarter at the time. Uh, so this is just kind of a way, I mean, for Kickstarter, it's a gigantic PR coup. It's a way of saying, hey, look, we're still here. We still matter. And all you guys who want the Pebble watch, the new one, which looks really super cool, uh, you can get it on Kickstarter. Look at us. So right. it's a really good move for Kickstarter. Yeah, and for us in the tech industry, it's exciting to talk about a company that's not Apple or Microsoft or Google or Facebook or Twitter. You know, it's, <laughs> there are other companies out there. <laughs> it's nice there to are. see them successful. Uh, so let's move on. According to OMG Chrome, a video surfaced confirming rumors of a new Chromebook Pixel. But shortly afterwards, the video was marked private and disappeared. But OMG Chrome did capture it. And, and it says that there is a speech given by uh, by Renee Nimi, who is the Google work and Google education head, saying that there will be a Chromebook Pixel released soon. Mm -hmm. Who is this uh, computer designed for? <clears throat> yeah, that's <laughs> you start with the hardest questions. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, Google says that most Chromebook Pixels, which is the high-end version of the Chromebook, are bought by developers, and it's not a mass market product at all. Um, it's basically a, a Chrome terminal. You know, it, it, it's a terminal to Google services. Uh, they're supposed to be fantastic computers. I've never used the Pixel. Uh, I've used a lot of Chromebooks, and I like Chromebooks a lot. But this one looks like a high-end version of the um, of their Chromebook for people who, for very in very limited use cases, want to spend $1,300 on a machine that really only runs Chrome, or if you hack it, uh, another version of Linux. Right. Well, the, the first, I guess the first Pixel was, uh, some people say it wasn't, it was a failure, but really um, others say that Google, it's exactly what they wanted to be. They're not mass marketing it. They, I think the video says that it was a proof of concept. So what are they trying to prove? What concept are they trying to prove with it? I, I don't know what the concept is. It's a strange oddball platypus of a computer. <clears throat> and um, I can't see, I mean, if I had, if I need to have $1,300 to spend on a laptop, I'm going to get one that has some local processing power and an operating system in it that runs apps. Uh, and if I need to do a bunch of Chrome apps, I've still got a $1,300 computer that can <clears throat> run Chrome and, and plugins. Right. Well, it's interesting because so, the average person, I think I was talking to Jason Howell, who's our Android expert, you know, we just use, I don't really use that much besides, I mean, we use Gmail, we use Sheets, we use all the, you know, I'm mm -hmm. mostly online. I'm not really doing a lot of other things. So, um, and, and, you know, if you have a, a laptop like that, you're not so worried about the latest malware because it's harder to get it on there. Chromebooks are great. I love my kids' school. They have, they all have Chromebooks there. Um, and they're great computers. Uh, I, I, I think they're fantastic computers to have around the house because they're cheap. I mean, forget the Pixel. You can get a really good functional web browsing Chromebook for, I don't know what, $300 now. Uh, and they're great for that. They're, they don't get 
viruses, as Leo was just saying in the last show, you can power wash them and, and just start over. You log on with your Google uh, credentials and boom, you've got all your Google stuff right there. Um, I, I love Chromebooks for particular use cases. I don't see who's going to buy the um, the Pixel. Uh, maybe it's you know a Halo computer, a proof of concept, uh, something to give to um, developers at the Google I.O. conference when it comes up. Um, but Chromebooks, great. Pixel, I guess it's like, you know, uh, I don't want a $80,000 VW Beetle. I don't know. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, you brought up the schools. It's so true. I mean, my kids have them too. And they say they replace them every two years. I mean, they have to. Kids are rough on computers. And so you're not oh going to buy, you know, a $1,000 computer. So the two or $300 computer is... You know, they're not getting malware on it, but they are dropping it and doing all kinds of other things to it. That oh, they they'll get malware. They, they, if, if they could, they would download malware on it. <laughs> That's true. It's, kids are dirty, dirty things. <laughs> they are. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on uh, to Mobile World Congress, uh, yeah. the biggest smartphone event of the year. It's kicking off next week mm -hmm. in Barcelona. Uh, will you be there? I'm sure you'll be reporting on it. Will you be reporting on it from here or from there? I'm sending a team. Uh, we've got people going. Um, they uh, are storing up on their sleep right now because it is a, uh, a zoo of a conference. You know, this year it's going to be um, smartphones, of course. Uh, we also expect there will be a lot of wearables, uh, even some virtual reality stuff announced at uh, MWC. It's it's a big show. It's a really big. It's a big shoe. <laughs> so there's there's going to be all kinds of announcements, and as often happens, a lot of the details about new phones they get slowly leaked beforehand. Today there was a Notorious tipster up leaks revealed three videos that allegedly show off nearly all of the newest features in HTC's new One M9. Mm. Uh, I think there was also a page on a German website that included specs and even pricing information. Now, are these leaks from HTC? Are they are they real leaks? What's your take on this? Well, I I don't know. I can't speak to the veracity of these leaks. Um, I do know that the M9 is a make or break phone for HTC. Um, you know. And Mobile World Congress is Samsung's show mm -hmm. this year, and it's HTC's to lose. Uh, Samsung has been massively successful um, in expanding its product line and rolling out multiple versions in, in, in nice high-end phones. And HTC has had, you know, the, uh, the, the M8 and the M7, uh, which are really good Halo phones, but they didn't fill in the line with enough low-end phones. Every, the previous phones of the HTCs, they're really good. They're beautiful. They've got the nice speakers. They've got a good display. Um, but it's not enough. And Samsung and HTC, remember, HTC made the first Android phone that was sold. You know, they're dyed-in-the-wool true Android believers, but Samsung has the brains and the muscle to just take over the, the market, and, and they're winning in Android phones, and HTC has become a, a bit player. So... I don't know how, even if these these rumors are true and these videos are accurate and leaked, um, I don't know uh, what the HTC phone can do in light of the Samsung juggernaut. At, at Mobile World Congress, we'll probably also see, we're almost definitely going to see new Samsung phones as well, the new Galaxies. And um, I predict they're going to be pretty good <laughs> if you want to compare it to what other companies have to offer. So the, the Galaxy S6, I mean, is that gonna is that what you're excited about? What which phones are you excited to hear about? I think it's the S6 that we're gonna be that everybody's gonna be excited about. Yeah. Uh, things have already started are to leak on that one as well. Um, that will be the big news of Mobile World Congress. That's what everybody is expecting. Well, thank you so much, Rafe. That's Rafe Needleman, Editorial Director at Yahoo Tech. So we can check out all of your coverage on uh, the Mobile World Congress next week. Yep. And uh, what are the other big stories you guys are working on? Uh, well, I don't, I'm sending half my team to Mobile World Congress. Uh, by the way, that's tech.yahoo.com. Don't miss it. Okay. Um, and um, we're tracking that. I mean, right? It's, it, it, this is, it's been kind of a, a, a lull in, after CES, there's kind of a lull in product stuff. So we're looking at uh, new products uh, from, you know, Samsung, uh, HTC, Sony. We'll see what, uh, you know, Microsoft's Nokia is doing there. Um, I'm really hopeful that there'll be some cool VR stuff to play with uh, for my guys. Um, and that's where there's going to be wall-to-wall -wall coverage uh, starting on Friday when the previews roll out and then all through the show. 
Well, thank you so much, Rafe. That's again, it's tech.yahoo.com. And uh, can people follow you on Twitter? And they can. They should. They must. <laughs> okay, that's at, at Rafe Needleman. Rafe, R A F E. All right, all right, at Rafe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Coming up, one website no longer wants to post the nude pictures you stole from a celebrity, and virtual reality might be giving you brain damage. But first, do you want to start investing smarter? Personal Capital can help with a very special offer for you because you watch or listen to Tech News Tonight. For a limited time, when you open a new Personal Capital account, they'll give you $100 for every $100,000 you deposit, up to $10,000. You get cash in your account and personalized investment advice from registered investment advisors. Schedule your free one-on-one -on -one investment consultation today because I do not know how long this offer will be available. With Personal Capital's award-winning financial app, you can monitor your income, spending, and the performance of your investments in real time on a single, easy-to-read screen. Have you ever looked at your investment statements and seen huge fees and you don't know why they're there or what they're there for or how long they've even been there, how long you've been charged the same fee that doesn't make any sense to you? Personal Capital will help you find and eliminate high mutual fund and 401k fees and other hidden brokerage fees that may be costing you years off your retirement. And best of all, it's free. Personal Capital gives you total clarity and transparency to make better financial decisions and manage your portfolio like a pro. So why wait? Now is the time to invest smarter and open a personal capital account. Make taking control of your financial future one of your resolutions for 2015. Go to Personal Capital now and set up your free account. And for a limited time, if you qualify, Personal Capital will give you $100 for every $100,000 you deposit up to $10,000. That's personalcapital.com slash TN2. And we thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Here's an update to a story we reported last year and that we've been reporting long before I even started working here. The net neutrality vote is finally here and it looks like it's really going to happen on Thursday. And today, the New York Times reported that Republican Senator John Thune, chairman of the Senate Com Commerce Committee, said they would not overturn the coming ruling, paving the way for Tom Wheeler's version of net neutrality. And I wish I could say that this means the battle is over, but what it really means is that now it moves from the political realm to the judicial realm, and really, it's just the beginning. And here's an update to a story we reported this morning on Tech News Today about the Google-backed augmented reality project Magic Leap. It's still one to three years away, according to uh, MIT Technolo Technology Review. Magic Leap is a new kind of augmented reality technology based on digital light field signal technology. And this afternoon, quirky Magic Leap CEO Ronnie Abovitz participated in an Ask Me Anything thread on Reddit, where the internets could pillory him with real questions. Abovitz talked about stereoscopic 3D. That's the kind of uh, augmented or virtual reality that's used in Facebook's Oculus Rift and Samsung's Gear VR. That's different than what Magic Leap uses. Among other claims, Abovitz suggested that Oculus Rift and Samsung's Gear VR could cause temporary and permanent brain damage. Several Reddit users in the thread asked for scholarly articles to back this up this claim, but Abovitz, who does have a background in biomedical engineering, did not provide any. Speaking of Reddit, the company announced their updated privacy policy to prohibit involuntary pornography. The site now says you can file a report if someone else has posted a digital image of you in a state of nudity or engaged in any act of sexual conduct. A spokesperson for the company said the change was made in part because Reddit was the go-to place for people to see the nude photographs that were stolen from celebrities last fall, and Reddit says they would like to change that. And speaking of pornography, Google also instituted new rules about sharing sexually explicit images, video, and graphic nudity but they went a step further. Google says that after March 23rd of this year, blogger will change all public blogs to private if they think the blogger is violating the new rule. Now, if a site is made private, the user will be able to invite people to view it, but it will not be publicly available on the internet unless they do that. According to bloggers' updated terms, nudity will be allowed only if it offers a substantial public benefit, for example, in artistic, educational, documentary, or scientific contexts. Critics of the new rules say Google has no right to decide what's artistic and what's porn. And finally, today would have been Apple co-founder Steve Jobs' 60th birthday. Jobs was born February 24th, 
1955 and, of course, died of pancreatic cancer on October 5th, 2011, when he was only 56. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.